what I know about genetically modified food is that they're doing, they're actually splicing DNA cells, and they can actually now splice animal DNA cells into, into the food. food. That's <laughs> what, that's what so people that's don't like. So that's part of the problem, yeah. um, is that vegetarians won't even know if they're eating something yes. that has animal yes, 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 in it. Yes, 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 yes. That's what people protested, yes. And the other thing is that they haven't done enough testing in that they're finding some of the things that they've uh, put into, say, corn, for instance, to protect it from corn uh, bulls, I think they are those, uh, an, an insect that attacks corn. Well, what's happening now is that when the corn pollinates, the monarch butterflies, which are maybe miles away, but the pollination from the corn plants with this insect poison in it are eating um, other plants that have, they're collecting the pollen off of um, other types of plants that have corn pollen on it, and they're dying by the yes, thousands. Yes, yes. So they, it hasn't been tested enough, and there's too yes, many yes. repercussions. Mm -hmm. the, uh, that's what I thought. Anything else, honey? I think, I think she said it all. Uh -huh. Anything else? Anything else you need to let us know? Um, sometimes the modified plants, they also um, mix with the normal plants, and then the whole crop changes, and maybe there will be no more normal plants of this kind. They, if the modified plants um, mix the pollen, then the normal, more normal plants. Yeah. As well as, yes, yes. And one time I heard that they tried it with some modified, um, I think, soya beans or something, and actually the crop they got was less yeah. than ordinary, and many plants died, and it even kind of poisoned the soil. Yes, yes, yes. And they infest, infest the neighboring miles away uh, farm. Yeah. And, and they're breeding the seeds so that the seeds will not reproduce, so that... So that um, Every, every year you can't go out and take the seeds from your crop and replant them. The seeds terminate after one year so that they're, they're only good for one year and they're, um, they're patenting the seeds so that the seeds are no longer owned by you. They're owned by the corporations that have the patents on the Patent genetic right. mo you, modified food. My goodness. Yes, he wants to say something more. And I also heard that um, they kill the insects, that, like the ones that are damaging, that they, that, but sometimes they kill all kinds of good insects mm -hmm. too, or even birds, yes. and it's not controllable. What do you think is the, the damage caused by uh, the genetic modified vegetable? So from, from what we have heard now, you think, why people protest? Well, from the vegetarian point of view, it's mainly these uh, animal cells which uh, get yes. into the plants. Yeah. I have a question for the sister. Yeah. Now, if the corn were genetically identical, wouldn't that be more prone to diseases if they were grown in masses? Wouldn't they be more prone to diseases? If I missed the first part. Of if it. every crop were to be identical, wouldn't each crop be more prone to a disease? Actually, they've, they've done some research on that many years ago, back in the 40s, when they were first starting to do um, like pesticides and herbicides. They had one field that um, had been, they'd been growing pesticide-induced um, crops, and one field that was pure organic. And they tested seeds that were organic seeds and then inorganic seeds. And the, the seeds planted in organic soil did much, much better than any of the others. And right after that, they had like a huge swarm of something like locusts or something like that. And the organic seeds and the organic soil w had the, a much higher survival rate than any of the other, um, you know, ones with pesticides or herbicides or, or any, any sorts of additives. And so the strongest, healthiest plant is the one that's, it's, that's grown from an organic seed in organic soil. I mean, naturally grown. Mm. Yeah, that's for the test. Actually, I have grown some organic in, in Mali, and it's eaten all by the worms. <laughs> we go, we don't spray anything. <laughs> yeah, we eat with them too, you know, whatever left over, but not much. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, yeah, actually, we survive up to now without any genetic uh, food, so I don't know why. 
But you see, because most people out there, they are not vegetarian also, you see? So they see in the point of profit, yes. And they also argue that if they grow genetically modified food, they will have a lot more food and the, the hungry people will be fed. Theoretically speaking, maybe it, it sounds good, but we have not tested far enough to know how beneficial or how damaging can it be. But the point is, if uh, they uh, ingest them with uh, with uh, animal uh, DNA, then uh, we should not uh, eat them. Yeah, we should not eat them to begin with. Yeah, we just find those uh, normal food to eat. Yeah, but luckily a lot of farmers and uh, government uh, um, representatives they're against it. I think that I read an article where the governments are very afraid of world hunger, and right now, if you project out, you know, the the birth rate and the available soil and and all that, it it looks like there's going to be world hunger in a number of years. But the article noted that, you know, again, the same arguments that you know it takes like between nine and thirty pounds of grain to feed one make one pound of beef. And so if, if we hmm? switch to yeah, uh, if we switch to a vegetarian diet, then those arguments go away. That's the best. That's the best. Everybody knows that. I mean, a lot of people know that. Not everybody knows that. Uh, some people ignore it. But that's the fact, that we waste so much food and grain and water and medicine and time and energy and manpower just to cultivate uh, animal meat. Whereas if we just eat whatever that there already, without having to use that to feed the animals, then we have enough to feed everybody. We should never have any hunger in this planet. We have more than enough. Before we even discuss genetic food, we are already fully fed. If we really are cooperating and, and, and are more selfless, just like uh, beings in many other planets. Other planets, they don't have hunger because they share. They never think anything that truly belongs to them. Yeah, they just take care of it. Yeah. Before we used to look for vegetarian diet, there's no egg and all that, and still sometimes we're still in danger. Because they mix things in everything. Even bread, sometimes they put egg in it. It's just a simple ice cream. Every kid's favorite, they put egg in it. And you never know which one don't have sometimes. It's like just very, for example, you know, very simple thing, basic thing. And sometimes, uh, uh, like a uh, normal thing, a marshmallow, just very simple kid stuff, yeah? Or even apple pie or anybody, they put egg in it. Even bread, just a basic thing. So sometimes I already thought we, we just have to bake our own food and, you know, and now we probably look like we have to grow our own <laughs> vegetable. Oh my God! Look like we have to buy an island somewhere and go there and hide together and 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. And grow our own food. But that's what people do in the old time. That's how different uh, nations have been born. You see what I mean? For example, Japan. They speak to uh, different, but when they're writing, eighty percent uh, of the Chinese understand them. And when the Chinese write, write 80 percent, you know, they understand, the Japanese understand 80 percent. See what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't Japan. It was probably uh, just an island, and then some Ch Chinese people go there, and, and they make the symbol of the nation is the sun, you know? Maybe some practitioner went there before, yeah? Symbol of the light. And then beginning, beginning, and later we lost the tradition, for example, like that. In Austria, they um, have part of the produce organic, and they even have it in the supermarket, and it's very popular. They cannot uh, meet the demand. Okay. So more people are doing it. Oh, good. Then accept it. I know what to do now. We switch into planting organic food and earn money. Mm. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. One one percent of the world's produce is organic, and ninety nine percent of it comes from the United States right now. Well, I see, I see organic food also in, in different supermarkets. That's just a small section. They, they, they write organic. And there is a group, they also grow their own food, make everything, remember? What's the name? Um, the what? The Amish. 
Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. But you have to really be very devoted, yeah, and forsake many of the fun of the city life. Because most of farming cannot be done near the city, yeah? If you don't want to do farming, you have to buy land in far away, it's cheaper. There's something called the fishy strawberry or the strawberry fish, where they've crossbred a fish with a strawberry in order to make the strawberry impervious to cold. Well, what mustard, uh, I think like 95 or even 98 percent we eat today, genetically, genetically modified. Changed, modified. And I think the government they have a regulation that you cannot just like, modify any tree and go you know, sell to the public. Mm. So I think, you know, look at the brighter side that the government control these regulations because the work hunger. If we can make a genetic code that, you know, mm. that combat like all the insects, more, more, yeah, more. produce more ah. and more, helps all the hungry people in the third world country, I think look, that's a better, better side. Fine, but so, do they? Stop the hunger right now since the genetic modified food? No. But this is a good uh, positive side. Go on eating your apple and it's no problem and she's going to be organic, you know, each have their own right. Yes, ma'am. Um, right now, I think the FDA is the one that people have been trying to get to label this and if they do ever label it, it'll come to an end fast, I'm sure. It's been a couple of years, people have been trying to get them to label it. Yes, but right they now, should. Yeah, right now on the internet even, they have their own web page and they're welcoming comments. Mm -hmm. And what everyone really should do is write, if they had like millions of people writing, or yeah. thousands, they hundreds of stop. thousands, it would get, as long as we get it labeled, uh -huh. then it will take yeah. care of itself. Yes, yes. So at least we know which one is what. Yeah, they should be honest, you know, because I know people, don't, a lot of people don't know which one is organic, which one is not, because not all of them are, not all of them which is not written organic are all modified food, you see? And a lot of people cannot afford the organic price sometimes, so they should label them, that's true. And they're also uh, rewriting the organic um, qualifications or whatever, and that's all on the website, that's what they're asking for comments on too. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they're rewriting it to be better or worse. Mm. I didn't mm. really read it that much, but if anyone can tune into okay. it. Okay, you tune into it and you write to your opinion. All right? Tell them to label all the organic and all the, uh, at least the modified food, so we know which one is what, with animal or not animal. Uh, <laughs> you know, now, oh, now we'll be extremely busy. Oh my God, before we go to the food store, we have to read which one have what animal and egg, and now we have to go to the fruit store and read the apple, what, is, <laughs> what kind of DNA is in there. We'll be very busy. You have no more time to worry and to, uh, f you know, flare your temper, nothing anymore. That's good, the world will be peaceful. <laughs> Anything else? So now you know why. Now you make your own choice. Yeah? You know all the reason, and you know all the, you know, the content of the uh, different food. Like you know what to do. Yeah. In Europe, many people protested, and then yes. actually they do label it in some supermarkets, in some big companies like food chains. I know. There are many big companies, they don't sell certain, certain and they don't buy certain, certain uh, food from uh, modified food. Yeah, a lot of protests, and then they, a lot of them stop actually. Mm. A lot of experiments for uh, genetic modified food has stopped because the people voice their opinion. You make your choice, okay? <sighs> uh, but the genetically modified food, has it has any bad effects so far? Uh, bad effect, side effect. I haven't read. There are several books out now. I haven't had a chance to read them. Uh -huh. Anybody knows? I, I've read that sometimes um, they fear that people can have more allergies. A allergies. Allergy. Yes, yes, yes. Because it's so mixed up and the body don't know how to digest. Yeah. I don't know what the side effects are, but um, supposedly 68%, I think, is the thing. 68% of our food has been grown this way for at least two years. Mm, only two years. Sometimes it don't. It doesn't show yet. Things sometimes take longer time to to show the effect, right? 
or let's just hope that whatever it is, uh, be, since it's already done, let's hope that the people won't uh, have any bad effect. At least if it doesn't help, yeah, it doesn't harm. Since recently we have started the vegetarian diet, a vegetarian uh, kind of uh, fashion, huh? way of life, and a lot of people has been switched to vegetarian. And then the Maya has to invent uh, uh, whatever, modify animal or DNA food. We were just happy that a lot, a lot of people turn into vegetarian. Even in America, 20% more every year, that's what I heard. And then I was so happy, yeah? And a lot of animal farm has turned into different farm, yeah. In Austria, we have one initiate who is a farmer for organic vegetables, yeah. and he has a little farm, and it's just about enough for, I think, maybe 20 families or oh, something. Oh, that's cool. And it's nice because in summer we can have almost everything from him, and oh, it tastes even much better. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. If you don't have anything else to do, buy a little land somewhere and grow vegetable for us. You see, in Austria, that's what she was talking about. It's in her country, Austria. Austria, it, it is snow and it's cold like half a year. So you can only grow things in summer, in spring and then uh, in summer. So like six months you can grow things, right? And other things uh, can grow a little bit, but differently, yeah. In summer you have the most vegetable. And that's a very cold country, you know. It snows sometimes and sometimes it's very cold, like 10 degrees even below zero. It could be. They still can grow vegetable, and just one person, enough to feed 20 families. Farming is not an easy job, but it's very rewarding. You know, I heard that the statistic yeah, research has uh, uh, um, come to a conclusion that uh, the, the best happily marriage is the farmers. Yeah. And then the next are doctors, a third are teacher. So maybe if your marriage is uh, on a rock, you go and dig the rock and, <laughs> and make it into a fertile land, land and grow vegetable. Maybe that's the best job for everyone, I don't know. Otherwise, how come all the farmers have happy marriage? Must be because the product they make and the, the sun and the fresh air and they work together and watching things grow and feeling satisfied and happy. And other people who eat their food feel happy and good, so they partake the happiness of everyone when they eat the food. Maybe. Yeah. Yes.